Hello there, and welcome to Get Good. This is another Pains episode. My name, not Pains episode, a Talks episode. Goodness, I'll get it right one of these days. My name is Bruce, and joining me, as always, is the man, the myth, the legend, Manus. Manus, how are you doing, sir? Very good. Very good today. I'm basically always good. <laughs> and the it. days I'm if, not that good, I would say I'm good too. <laughs> if, I, if I assist and you say I'm bad, I'm like, oh, this, yeah. is gone. this has gone so awfully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, right. I'm good. Good. I'm happy to hear that. Well, you should be good because uh, as I uh, kind of revealed at the very start, this is this is about one of your favorite things. This is about paints and specifically our favorite paints. Yes. Um, I guess... We'll, we'll preamble a little bit on what we're looking for, but to give a bit of background, there was a lot of talk in the Discord about like basically every time someone is doing a paint run, it seems the question is like, what are your must-have colours? Um, yeah. And that got your brain <laughs> whirring, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's because it, it's actually something that is uh, even more exciting for me because I'm personally not that deep into paint. In the sense that some people almost kind of collect <laughs> paints too, and I really don't, because because of the way I started painting, I kind of just got whatever I needed for that one model, and then it kind of escalated from there. <laughs> and then next model, okay, I, I guess I need something, and I mean I'm not I'm not a saint in the sense that yes, I bought the entire range of uh, scale 75 and I did buy a lot of Reaper paints because uh, especially when you order something online and you get get it shipped you, it's very tempting I, yeah and you don't don't just buy one bottle of something or whatever I, well I didn't at least but <laughs> after those are the like it's not a complete set of Reaper but I got a, quite a few of them but after I got those two things I never did it again because personally, I found out, eh, I it's not like I'm not a brand type of guy. I guess it's more for me to pick out which ones I like for, like, both the colors, but also like the utility within and how they handle. And th so there are quite some different elements to what makes a good paint for me. Uh, and it varies upon brands heavily. Mm. Like you can have a brand with a, where one line has a yellow that you really like, but the greens not so much, or you have like three, five, ten specific paints in that line or in that uh, brand that you really just enjoy using. Um, so. <laughs> For me, it's uh, it is exciting when people say, "Oh, I really like this brand, and I and I found these colors that are just fit with my style of painting or whatever it is." Because I'm I'm basically open to everything. It's well, I, I think that's like a good like initial thought in terms of like it seems to me at a certain level in the community, the question is not what paint brand do you like, but what colors do you like, and the colors can come from anywhere. Yeah, I think so. And it's not, there are differences. Like, so, so uh, like, that's the good bridge to the first kind of question here is like, what are you looking for? What are you personally yeah, looking yeah, yeah, for yeah. in a paint? Yeah, I, uh, as I said, I, ha I have uh, the scale 75 set, I don't know, 64 bottles or whatever it is. Um, and while they are fine, they're just not for me, I found out in the sense that um, I'm looking for something that is either satin or satin matte. Uh, I'm not for super matte and generally not for like matte. Uh, so I would like it for, for, for my style of painting at least to be somewhere around satin or satin matte, um, <laughs> which is also like a, I mean, it, it's such a hard thing to, to talk about also because what constitutes something being satin into satin matte into matte into super matte whatever so and also that varies too because you can have a range where for example the 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 more white you have in it it tends to look more matte too right so it it also depends but i just found that 
the gel base combined with them being very, very mad was not really my liking. Mm. So I'm looking for something that is sat so and that, sat and mad. So scale 75, that, that, that gel that, base. Yeah, so nice. that's why I'm, I'm, I use them sometimes, but I, I generally don't actually, <laughs> even though I have the full set. Um, I will use them sometimes for mixing if I need something or they, they actually have, the thing is they have very nice colors because they are um, kind of, a, I guess, a bit different. They are uh, not as saturated. So they have, for example, some nice grayish tones that go into brown or purplish. And yeah, because they desaturate uh, the way they do, they, I, I actually quite like the tones they have. But <laughs> it's just, it, if you don't really like the way they, they handle, it's... Yeah, I just don't use them that much. So yeah. I, I, I would say lately I've gotten into AKE third gen, and I find that they are very good um, in the sense that they are more fluid than some of the others. Uh, for example, I paint with both Citadel and uh, Vallejo also, and they're not as fluid. Um, and I really like the coverage on the uh, AK third gen two, uh, but for me that is more of a finding the the colors within the brand thing, because as I said, some brands just have blues that don't work too well, but where the reds are just extremely good. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm picking and choosing, but I, I I'm mixing like. I don't like heavy body personally, and I don't like like when it borders there. Sometimes I, I have had some older bottles of the uh, Yeho where <laughs> they weren't heavy body, but they, they were thick. Um, and yeah, coverage is a thing too. Um, and then there are some grindy specifics about how they act when you kind of thin them, like how much can you thin them uh, before they kind of break it down entirely. and yeah, so there are some things there to look at too, uh, yeah. and no, I'm not think... too picky with with color, like the the specific color. It's not like ah, oh, this tone I need this because I, I will put a bit of black in or a bit of red in if that's like it, it's that's not a huge deal for me at this point, point. Um, and that's one thing. But another thing is, I'm not like I guess if you were, for example, commission painting. And you needed a like a set recipe to always be the same on every model, like month after month after month or whatever. That would be very important. But mm. <laughs> I'm display painting something, and I mean sometimes projects go a month, and sometimes six months, and sometimes twelve. But but whatever it is, I can find back to whatever recipe it is. So it, it and it also it doesn't matter too too much. Like the whole staying consistent within i mean i mix so much anyways so if you for example go all the way from a, a dark skin tone up to a very bright one on like the focal points and the highlights of that skin or face or whatever i mean you're mixing so much anyways so the tiny nuance is not that important for me that mm. said i'm always on the hunt for <laughs> that said i'm just gonna contradict myself right <laughs> Yeah, it, but so, and that's what I'm saying. It, it it's still exciting for me because I tend to just go for the same, I guess, thirty colors of or whatever. I mean, <laughs> in the Discord, I shared a picture recently with me putting all my colors from whatever open projects I have now, just uh, putting them in a bag or whatever. Um, and I, I mean, I think that maybe not. 30 but 40 or 50 something within the range of 30 or 50 and i basically never go out of those anyways i stay within those unless i find something where oh i want to try this out because uh, i mean maybe i should be painting braver i guess but uh, i just i just tend to like find a recipe and find a base and find whatever i think works and then you can you can tweak a lot with the same colors you can make a recipe that has, for example, two base tones, and you can skew it in so many 
different direction from there. And that's why I think this video is quite exciting for the others to see because a lot of paints are used and reused for different kinds of things. Yeah. And yeah. So. <laughs> I guess the only thing, because I don't think I, have, I, I certainly wouldn't have much to add on top of what you've said there. Being earlier on in my painting journey, it's 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 ultimately a case of, I think initially it was finding a paint that worked because I never yeah. I never came out the gate with Citadel because I thought ah I bet all the rubes use Citadel I'll use Vallejo because that's what <laughs> cool people use, and so I got yeah. some Vallejo paints and and really liked them generally, but it was only until and, and I and then I tried like a bit of Pro Acryl quite like Pro Acryl. I tried I tried scale seventy five and didn't like it at all first time I used it, um, but it was only when I tried the AK that I was like, oh, this is a paint that I yeah. really like. Did yeah. a lot of painting with AK and then have come back to those other paints and actually have improved with just handling paint in general. And so I find I like them. Um, yeah. The only thing that bugs me about Citadel, which is like the most repeated thing, is obviously they come in pots. And I know that shouldn't be the end of the world, but it feels like it should be. Like sometimes it's just <laughs> annoying. I hate getting I the brush mean, into the pot and then putting it on. It's just annoying. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, this has been talked about so much, but a, a bit on it. I, uh, in the beginning, I got some Citadel. Uh, because I started out watching Duncan. <laughs> like As you all do. cool people do, yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. So I got some of those. And also because when you buy the box, it says, use these paints on some yeah. of them at least. Yeah. So, of course, I did. And then I branched out into other kinds of stuff, like some Vallejo and, uh, as I said, Scale 75 and Reaper. And I have Camera paints and AKs. And uh, I have some different ones. So I kind of like slowly build on them. And in the beginning, I transferred uh, all my uh, my pots to droppers. And I mean, they will last you a long time because, well, display painting, right? Mm. Um, but uh, I did find that when they ran out, I just bought a pot. And I mean, now I just use them from the pots, actually. Mm. And I personally, I mean, I think I have more issues with different kinds of shitty nozzles than I have yes. with pots. And I'm not even joking. Like when the nozzle works, blobbing it on the wet palette is the best feeling in the world. But when they don't and you have to get a needle and sometimes you don't get that needle fast enough and you press a half a bottle on your wet palette, dude, that is rage inducing. So yeah. It's a lot and of money a, down the a, drain as well. Yeah, and the pot never did that on me. And I've never knocked over one of those uh, null oil, I guess, or whatever. Mm. So, <laughs> I, I mean, mean, I don't think it, I've ever seen you use null oil, so it, it could be that. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I actually own it, but I never use it. Um, but, just I mean... A, just for taste. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, <laughs> I think it is more something that we are telling ourselves is annoying than it really being annoying. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've come to the point now where, so I have a, God, what is it? A, a, uh, Scrag Brown. I really like the Scrag Brown. It's really yeah, good for rust. Yeah, it's a great one. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I was like, should I transfer it for a dropper? No, I can't be bothered. I used it from the pot and it's fine. And, and yeah. so I have a few more Citadel paints. I just can't be bothered transferring them. It's just too much effort. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just a mess, and I, I, I don't have time for that anymore. Um, <laughs> so I guess the only thing I'd add maybe to, to what you said is there are for me, I don't know whether mm -hmm. this is true for you, and maybe it is because I've seen your paint list, there are yeah. certain, you I would call them unicorn colors, colors that kind, they kind of exist in other brands, um, yeah. but they don't quite behave the same way and so a lot of the familiarity is based and the two that spring to mind are rhinoxide and bugman's glow neither yeah. of which necessarily i mean tan in in vallejo game uh, model color i think or game color is is similar as bugman's it's not the same though and therefore i come back to using those as citadel paints yeah yeah it is the same for me definitely uh, and of course i've i've kind of picked the ones on my list uh, well, some of them are exactly for that reason. Maybe not all of them, but some of them are. 
definitely because of that, because of, I mean, you can find an alternative, but it's just not quite the same. Mm. And it's just, I think it's also a matter of, now I know that paint and I know what it's supposed to look like. So when it doesn't, it kind of bugs me, even though yeah. the result is probably close enough and looks very good. And if no one knew, because no one is seeing my vision, right? They're just seeing what I produce. So they would be looking and thinking, well, it looks exactly the way it should. But I would know, well, yeah, but not quite there, right? So I think a lot of it is because of like handling that pain so much and knowing <laughs> this is the look and this is how it behaves and this is what I can use it for and yeah. Right. So you just get kind of <laughs> yeah, intimately familiar with it almost. I think intimately familiar is perhaps the, the best way of phrasing it. Because not only do you yeah. understand how the paint looks, you understand how it tastes. Um, <laughs> and all the other things that go into painting. Yeah, so the scale 75s are just a uh, no. Nope they don't taste good. Taste Absolutely good. not. Yeah. <laughs> Same with contrast paints. It tastes yeah. awful. No one wants them. Nope. <laughs> right. Yeah. So so uh, dear, dearest viewers and or listeners, um, in terms of how this has worked, uh, I've picked three paints. Uh, Malnus has picked four uh, because he's the better painter. So that's easy way of shaping it out. Uh, and we're going to go through it in terms of why well, we like the, the given paint slash color. Um, and then there's a few recipes that we've picked. So um, without further ado, Manus, you're, you're starting us off with Dark yeah. Sea Blue by Vallejo. Yeah, I I really, really, really like it. I, I don't know exactly what it is, but I think it's because it is a desaturated turquoise. Hmm. And it is very desaturated, kind of like almost like it, it is borderline gray, gray, right? When you just use it from the pot. But depending on what you put it over is one thing. Uh, because if you put it on black, it will, of course, be very dark and very desaturated. And if you put it over something lighter, if you have a like a lighter base, it will show much more of its own color. And it is extremely easy to kind of twist it in either going more green or going more blue. And it I know it is called Doxy Blue, but if you put in ice yellow on this one, it goes green. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So it is a desaturated turquoise, and I, I really, really enjoy it. So that's why, I mean, um, for in terms of like how it handles in general, it's um, it is very dark, which means it will be like your base tone, or at least very close to it. Uh, sometimes I will mix in a bit of black um, or very dark brown to give the like. I often say, don't start on black, but start on an, like an off black. So mm. uh, I do that at, at least. It, I mean, you can start on black, but it's I just find it looks a bit. I don't know, but more uniform if you start from an off black. Um, so I would use, for example, Daxi Blue, mix in a bit of black, and then use that for my darkest tone. And then I can go Daxi Blue on top and then whatever I want from there. And it mm. is uh, very nice for, especially if I've written cloaks. Uh, I did lately on Halgrim. Um, and I've written leather because if you, on top of that, go in a neutral, so you have black as your base, and you then go uh, dark sea blue on top, and then in a neutral tone from there, you get kind of like a rich, nice, like a bluish uh, leather tone. Um, I have some other examples of leather because that's a world of its own. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, speaking of someone who has actually worked with leather um, in a All professional right, casual, ca casual flex there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm a leather it is worker. A, Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's so it's a world of it, of its own, but it, it is very nice with the with the great gray tone on top, and I really really enjoy it for uh, steel. If you want to like a bluish steel look, it is great as a as a, a very dark mid tone or or a base for that. And then you can go 
as much or as little um, like blue on top of it mm. and to get that blue shine on the steel. And it it looks great if you if you have like your uh, blue base, bluish base going into gray and then have a, for example, ice yellow uh, warm highlights on top of it. So that's one of the things I enjoy with it that you can you can kind of twist and it's something that I do do like. So even though you maybe have a like a dark cold base, you can still go into warmer highlights. Mm. So you can kind of turn it around and make it even a bit more interesting. Um, so yeah, I, this one is one I, I really like. Um, yeah, for all kinds of, of things because it can okay. either look bluish or greenish or you can like have it more saturated or less saturated depending on if you mix in more gray or if you put pure colors in it. Yeah, it is very versatile. time. Yeah, and, and you're, I guess, echoing a little bit of, of um, Nicholas NRM's um, when when he's putting down base coats, he does the same. He doesn't start with black. He mixes in often yeah, I think darksy so. blue into into something to kind of have like yeah. a halfway black, which is which is yeah, nice. yeah yeah. I mean, I yeah. I've not I've not used this one too much. The only thing I have used it on, and I ha I have actually really liked it, um, is uh, on the Subsumus I'm currently working on. the The paneling is a lot of um, deep greens and using yeah. darksy blue to kind of push the shadows of it. Is yeah, really it's, nice because you just yeah. don't want to go darker green. It adds that that shadow color in because it has that that hint yeah. of blue. Yeah, yeah, it is Both. really nice. I, I want to say with it that it. I mean, <laughs> it might be that it is older and it's. I mean, something with con quality control or whatever. But th at least the ones I have had for a long time, it has been on the thicker side. As Vallejo sometimes is mm. which means i i like to use it as because it is like a dark tone you can make like you can mix in a lot of water and still have it actually put color on yes. whereas if you have like some maybe of the lighter colors or like brighter mid tones if you put too much water in it it, it just loses its power and this mm. one doesn't because it is so dark but it needs to have water in it for me to even work uh, work with it because it is a bit thick uh, yeah. compared to, for example, AK or um, yeah. Well, I guess in in the not thick category, my selection of Russian green by AK yeah. Interactive, and that's the main thing is it's AK, so it ain't thick. Um, I love this color. This this color was one of those I saw online. And just thought, and, and like weirdly trusted my eyes online because obviously paints on screen very different from paints on the model. <laughs> yeah. um, but I saw this and thought, oh wow, this is th this is a very interesting shade. I bought it and have like, as you know, Manus, I I enjoy Nurgle. That is one of oh. my favorite things in this world. I may have mentioned it on previous recordings, um, <laughs> and. One yeah. of the things I particularly enjoy is when I'm when I'm working on skin tones for anything like decomposed is I mix this green in, and even if it's a, even if it's a Bugman's glow start or I'm getting um, like into the mid tones the, like decomposed flash which is um, and vampiric flash uh, which yeah. is what's listed here, it mixes into them and no matter what quantity you mix it in it will always give it a sheen of green and yeah the, a particular shade. There's 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 a wide range of greens out there. Um, obviously, depending on whether you're going more blue or more yellow, um, this one is like ethereal. It is perfect in my estimation. Um, <laughs> it, it's it was the base. Um, it was the base color for the snicker I recently finished um, mixing Russian green in with with like some darker reds just to set those initial shadows and then pushing up quite quickly. Um, and then alga green, which is another of my favorite greens, it mixes perfectly well with that in terms of vegetation and plant life. It is just this, it's a living green. That's the best way I can describe it. When, when you look at a landscape, you will see a lot of this shade in there and using it, I mean, probably why it's it was used as like a camouflage color because, hey, that ain't that important. 
Um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, like it has those those AK qualities I really like in terms of um, the coverage is superb. Um, it handles really well. You can thin it to a glaze beautifully. And even if, when it's very, very thin, it will still give you that hint of green that you need um, to work with. Um, if, if, if you paint a lot of greens and don't have this in your arsenal, I think you're a fool. And I say that now going to you, knowing that you maybe don't have this one in your arsenal. No. You, you, you don't have much AK, do you? Uh, I don't. I think I have like maybe 15 colors or something right now. I'm I'm slowly adding them because they are so locally to me now, mm. which they weren't before, which means every time I, I need to work on something, I, I try to go over. I mean, the AK range has one thing going against it for me is that they are almost all of them having a bit of white in them. Yes. And and a lot of them go kind of pastel-ish at least, um, which I mean is fine, but Sometimes you need something else, but this one is, uh, it's definitely also one uh, I will be adding uh, because I can see, even though I know screen color and real life color is not really the same, but I can tell from this one because it's, I mean, I've just used olive as a, like a base for, for example, gold. And mm -hmm. this one might be good for a base olive gold. And looking at the color as it is there, I bet you it would be very good with deep purple shadows too. Mm. So I, I think this one, and that's kind of why I, I like these. I mean, they're kind of desaturated, like olives and ochres and also the reds and the blues. And because they, they go quite well with other colors too, then because they are exactly desaturated, so they are easier to pair uh, with them going in a range from, for example, purple into green into even a, a, a warm highlight of some color mm. uh, it, it could even be a like a skin tone or whatever um and I, so that's I, I i look at this one and think yeah i, I definitely should have it <laughs> because i do love <laughs> so, that's why you're also like trash magnus because you need some ak <laughs> russian greens maybe, really yeah maybe fun. that's the problem why they that's that was it yeah. it was that simple yeah. right we, we have we have <laughs> so next on the slate is an all-timer um an absolute classic rhinoxide yeah your pick yeah i i think it is probably my absolute favorite in terms of like colors i would put in a recipe to make it distinct. Mm. Um, I think it is. I use it for so many things. Um, and I've looked for alternative too, in in that I've used, for example, uh, the Curious Leather from Two Thin Coats lately. And it is kind of there, but not really. Mm. It, it is redder, which means that when you mi start mixing it, it looks different, um, and I will say another thing with the with the Rhinox hide. <laughs> the coverage isn't perfect on it at all. It's not no. that good actually, mm. but it doesn't matter too much when you're using it, especially because, as I said, I tend to go as like off black, <laughs> which means a single layer of this one actually gives you an off black. Yeah, so because you would have two or three layers because before it turned like really opaque, it there's something with it that means you need to know that it behaves very different in terms of going upwards or downwards in uh, value. Meaning, if you paint it over something light, it looks nothing like it would over something dark. Hmm. But I just really really enjoy that this one is also one of those you can thin down and use as a glaze but you don't have to thin it down like 10 parts water to one part so it do you don't destroy the properties of the paint at all because already i'd say at two or three parts it is close to a, an actual glaze and it is beautiful for different kinds of shadows on and i say different kinds of shadows because it goes on almost anything. Like, it, yeah, I think this one is one of the best colors 
out there um, for like versatility in something that you want to look like distinctly like it has Ryan Anxiety in it. <laughs> yeah. And you can and you can often see, you can often tell so many people when I have posted something, <laughs> when they're asking for a recipe, say this looks like Ryan Anxiety. And like, it damn, is, good eye, correct. <laughs> yeah, it is 99%. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I will say using it for a base on, for example, um, I've written like desaturated golds. It's perfect for that. I really like it. And if you like take your step between English uniform and Rhinox Hide as a 50-50 mix, you get a very nice color there too. Like mm. a kind of a greenish, desaturated uh, shadow. It is very good for that. And because it kind of goes, um, like it's a brown, but it's a purplish brown. Most yeah, browns very, are very, like, very slight purple in it. It's it's weird. It is. It is, and it is kind of weird. But it it means for me at least, it is incredibly good for like a desaturated dark leather. Mm. Um, because you can mix in like a skin tone of some kind, um, <laughs> and I've put my favorite skin tone there, um, and you get kind of like a desaturated purple. It, so it looks kind of gray, but it's not gray. You can tell that there are, uh, or there is some color in there. Mm. Um, yeah, so it's very good for that. And I, I mean, if I'm doing red skin or red cloak, or I uh, just noted demon skin but it could be a red cloak too i would probably start with a base coat of rhinox hide next step mix in some fist and red or whatever into the rhinox hide and i'm already started i don't go from like you can get close with just taking red and then mixing in some black but it's just not quite there so mm. i and instead of doing the mixing and i i always have Rhinox hide on the desk, anyways. <laughs> so, it's just there, yeah, and waiting for you. yeah, and sometimes, like, I, I'm doing the orcs uh, right now, orcs, and I specifically didn't use Rhinox hide, but I picked a color because I, I wanted to test out the other, like, the curious leather, uh, and it is very similar to it. And I ended up base coating the entire model in it because I can work almost any color on, ta on top of that, like very dark brown that mm. is kind of desaturated into yeah a bit of purplish yeah, yeah. It, it's a great color well, where, like when when you were talking then i was thinking oh it is it's almost like an ideal base for anything organic but then you do think it's the foundation of gold it's the foundation of like a, that battered steel it's actually incredibly yeah. versatile in, in what it can yeah, be yeah i for. think so i think so it is great for also yeah exactly using on Battered steel, if you want something, or maybe not steel, but an iron, for example, because iron is a bit kind of like brownish in the in the shadows. Mm. Uh, and that means it pairs extremely well. Also, if you want to do uh, kind of like a rusted look uh, on top of that in the shadows, which is something I often do too. Um, because if you do an NMM, you can get away with like having smaller highlights. And then doing like in the opposite of the range, you can go for like oxide, yeah. And it it is perfect for that too if you uh, put your weathering on top of that. So yeah, I enjoy it so much. <laughs> it's uh, yeah, one of the best colors out there, really. Yeah. Is. yeah. And, and so like sometimes I think probably the only thing I'd say is is like an automatic selection. So. Yeah, the other day I was painting Septimus's staff, the, the wooden part of it, and like mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, it's wood, Rhinox hide base. Like that's what yeah. I need. That's the best base yeah. because, and like, not only do you have that foundation, but you know, at the end of the process, when you want to glaze things back, it's going to glaze beautifully. Yes, um, exactly. And and that's why it's like that. I mean, you know, you mentioned that cuirass leather from Two Thin Coats. Um, the the color punch Afro shadow from AK is close. Yeah, Both of yeah. them are close. Neither of neither yeah. of them are perfect. Um, and maybe the only other thing to add is that that coverage that you mentioned. It then suits that scratchy 
sketchy style if if you're going to be doing that as part of like yeah. later work it is the lack of coverage then can be really beneficial and let you just have yeah. a bit more of a free form expressionistic yeah. way of painting yeah I agree. so just yeah. everyone outside everyone it's just easy always I mean, have it in your arsenal yeah. <laughs> so my my second pick is emerald by ak yeah um all three of mine are ak just because i use them the most it, it made sense for me to pick um if if I could probably explain this in one one term, it's like royalty. If if you're ever needing to make something look regal and expensive, emerald is a good go-to. It's it's perfect in in gemstones. Um, yeah. I th I think one of the things I'm looking forward to, because I do paint a lot of decayed stuff, unsurprisingly. <laughs> but when I'm painting something like neater, an emerald cloak is gorgeous and. Yeah. You see how it renders in fabric. It, it is incredibly versatile in that. Um, the my, my main use for it, obviously being a Nurgle boy, is any sort of copper and brass for adding that verdigris. Yeah. It is the foundation, I think. You so a lot of people go for a more bluish verdigris. I don't like that. I like a greeny verdigris because I think it plays off the the copper better. And you just need to desaturate it with like. I mean, I put here Doxy Blue, classic Vallejo. Um, yeah. <laughs> But and then like bring it down, you can then thin it and then push it back up with ivory. And it it the 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 different like renders of a verdigree, like all those different colors, it's just gorgeous. It is incredibly versatile. You can you can maybe we don't talk about this enough. You can really bully this paint into shape, uh, and it will do <laughs> what you want it to do. Um, it is probably something that I will try in future is using it as a foundation for some Nurgle armor. Um, I guess Age of Sigmar Nurgle as opposed to like Death Guard. Yeah. And I just, as someone that's trying to paint with a bit more saturation, I think it's it, it's incredibly useful in that and could be a good foundation. I might try it. It might be awful. Um, but <laughs> the fact that if I'm doing gemstones, if I'm needing that verdigree, if I want to add a bit of excitement somewhere in the model that I'm reaching for Emerald, and the fact that it's like, I've already used quite a lot of it, I think so is how much I like this color, even if for some projects, like, you know, painting an ultramarine, I'm not going to use this. No. Unless, uh, no, no, it's just not, <laughs> not going to be used. Um, but uh, don't you have some you, grenades or something that you can... Uh, yeah, maybe, maybe. But I think, <laughs> I think this is like, I think it's easy when you think about like, favorite paints to think, oh, broad spectrum. I want a paint that does as many things as possible. But actually... Oh a very yeah. highly specialized pain that does something really well is yeah. just as valuable. I mean, I, I'm always banging on about AK Volcanic Yellow. Like, it doesn't do everything. In fact, it's awful at so much, but in a few specific applications, it's really, really useful and there's nothing yeah. quite like it. And that can make something a favorite pain for me. I agree. I think it is actually one of the more important things to, because you can find some a lot of colors that are quite versatile, uh, especially when you get into the like the slightly desaturated uh, colors, um, but finding some that kind of fills that role where I can't really get that yellow to work, but finding something where it just okay now I know it just works all the time because there are some things where eh, it is hard to <laughs> make work and look good. So finding your colors that just okay, I can nail this down. Now I don't have to <laughs> worry and experiment and whatever when you just want it to work because sometimes you want to experiment, but yeah. a lot of times you just want it to work. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm halfway through a model, I'm done with experimenting. I need this yes. to work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I, I forgot what your next paint selection is. This is going to be a nice little treat. Kislev, yeah. ah, you mentioned this in the Rhinox hide. Take I did, and I put it there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could have been anything on the uh, on the Rhinox Hide one, but I, I used Kislev Flesh because, yeah, well, it's it's one of those I, I use quite a lot too. It is kind of a warm uh, flesh tone. Um, not too dark, but it is warm. And I have given some examples here. It is nice, and I don't think it, for me at least, it, it doesn't turn chalky at all, even though it does have quite some white in it. Hmm. Um, so the handling part is very, very good. 
uh, it is hard for me to exactly say how it handles straight out of the pot because when I transferred all my <laughs> pots to droppers, I put in some flow improver and a bit of retarder and yeah, so uh, they they have shifted uh, properties, but it it does not go chalky. It uh, dries up um, satin, which is nice for skin. I I don't like when skin goes chalky or matte. Okay. It, it's, it, no, it's not it, realistic. Uh, no, it looks weird for me. So, I, I mean, I know that there are, are display painters who really like it, um, like the look, and you can force like the lighting angle uh, even more with a very matte, but I just don't like it. I I want it to be satin. Um, and it, it is great for that. It is... Uh, it is great for um, if you have it as a mid-tone on skulls, because I think skulls are something that tend to go a bit boring. Mm -hmm. Like they go in a sand tone, maybe a dark sand or whatever, and then you put like mixes of ivory on top, and you can literally do anything with skulls. It can have a brown base or a green base, or it can be warmer or colder or... You can have the more grayish looking or whatever. And I, some people are complaining sometimes that there's, let's say they have something they're painting on a project where the skulls kind of look like their gold recipe. Yeah, but that's because you're doing the skulls wrong. I, <laughs> I guarantee it. It's because you should have made them distinct then. You should have hmm. made them green from like ha having a green shadow or a greenish olive mid-tone or like desaturate them ex like all the way down to almost purely gray. Um, so you can do so much with it. And I like uh, having them like a bit warmer and like almost like they are like a skull would look if it was on a very sunny day. Um, so it goes a bit more warm. And it skulls is should great never as be a boring is a, like a good watchword, I think. Like if you're painting and huh? your skull looks boring, like you've made a mistake. Skulls should never be boring. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I it is. I mean, it is possible to do something else then at least. I, I know that. Um, and it, and as I said, it, it is great for a, like a, an highlight, a highlight color on top of, uh, for example, if you have uh, like a leather that goes all the way from a very dark brown then you can do a saturated like orangey brown in the middle and then uh, end with the with the Kislev flesh on on top of it all for the like the very final highlight scratchy uh, uh, cracks where it's all the way down to yeah the bottom layer of the uh, of the leather it, it's very good for that too and of course it goes well with flesh <laughs> <laughs> it funny is. that <laughs> but a funny thing is a lot of the 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 colors that says something with flesh can used on all kinds can be used on all kinds of things that have nothing to do with flesh mm -hmm. and a lot of the colors that don't say anything with flesh on it can be used within a flesh tone so it yeah it's uh don't get too hung, hung up about what like if it says kiss the flesh it can be for everything <laughs> yeah I, I think that's a good a good kind of a good sign that you're maybe moving out of like that beginner phase is you're not thinking of oh well the paint mentions skin ergo it has to be used on skin but actually yeah. this is the shade i could use this in x y and z like yeah it is probably i understand why why it's done that way because if you are army painting if you don't necessarily care for painting having something that that points you in the right direction and use this here is really yeah. handy but as you as you enter more of a display painting mindset, you need to start thinking of what are the colors here, and and actually yeah. studying how what, like what colors actually exist in real life. Um, you know mm -hmm. your leather recipe here on like oh I I see I understand now like when I look at leather, I'm not looking at brown with white scratches. I'm actually looking at a hell of a lot of different shades, tones, etc., and different paints are going to do that differently. Yeah, and I almost said it before on uh, <laughs> on the very greedy thing, uh, but I think now it's kind of come up twice. 
uh, it is very powerful if you have um, something like, it could be verdigris or leather or whatever, vary the tones a bit within it. Hmm. It it doesn't have to be all the same. So you can have, like, I, I put Buckman's Glow there because you can put in a bit of Buckman's Glow on some, some areas, have some scratches that are in a bit of a different tone. And the same with the verdigris. If you have some of it being very, like, emerald green and some of it being a bit darker and maybe a bit bluer on some parts and then going very like a li very light uh, I use that nylag oxide and I actually think it's great for the, the final like few spots of very bright oxide but just varying those like the tones and the colors a bit within like the same model is, is very powerful mm. yeah and the same now we're back at skulls if you have three skulls on your base, you don't have to paint them all the same tones. You mm. can have one of them being a bit darker or one of them being a bit grayer or whatever. You, you, I mean... Well, unless they all died at the same time, like they're going to have different levels of like age. Like, that's yeah, why I like exactly. green skulls because moss grows on skull. Like, and it, that's a very particular look that's nice to, to yeah. ape. Yeah. Wine red. That's my yeah. favorite word. All right, so I am, I am a... I, for the longest time, I couldn't find a red I particularly liked. Um, th there was my mainstay, which was a uh, Vallejo model color red, which is a lovely red. Um, but one of the things that that red lacks, I think, is vitality. It does not feel alive. Mm. Um, and obviously, when you think of red, you think of blood. But all the blood reds I looked at, you know, they are quite bright, typically higher in value. Um, and... Wine red is for me the perfect base of both the the like if you want to do gore gore, you can you can mix in a bit of the the um, dark rust color to get that I guess mm. oxidized blood like aged blood and flesh um, and then push it to scarlet as it gets as it gets fresher but also wine red on its own is pretty much perfectly blood in my eyes um, yeah. certainly um, and then. It is it is a color that as you as you push it higher in value, it just gains interest. You can push it lower, it gains interest. It, it doesn't get more boring by any stretch of the imagination. So, I put here cloaks like it's that volcanic yellow again, just because I, I for me personally, sunlight hitting red is not brighter red. It's it's often something that's a bit more orange or yellow, and volcanic yellow is a really good way to, to kind of move wine red up in value with it still retaining a lot of interest. Um, and so I just I just use this for everything. It's it's also in terms of how the how the paint behaves, what mm -hmm. as you thin it down for glazing, it, it retains so much of its strength it's it's unreal. So uh, a classic example is again Nurgle painter. I have my weird uses. Um like the, the boils on Nurgle, I will thin this down to a damn near glazed consistency, I will pop it on top. Put a bit of white on, pop it on top again, put a bit of white on, pop and and just build that interest up. And it it's so vibrant by the end of it. Um yeah. you can mix it with blues and make this beautiful bruised color, um, which is which is just yeah. heaven to put on like an older flesh. So it is for me like if someone said if I could have one paint from AK, it would probably be wine red <laughs> over everything, just because <laughs> it's it's once you find a like it like I can find different greens that I like. I can find a different emerald color, yeah. I'm sure. I've yet to find a red that hits quite like this one. I actually agree. It's it is hard to get like good reds, both in terms of the actual color and also like the coverage and yeah. Uh, I, personally, I go with uh, citadels because it is the ones that I found through the the range mm. uh, actually works the best in the sense that <laughs> you want it to be able to cover but still be able to thin it down and <laughs> you want it to actually be red and not like yeah desaturated or going into orange or whatever so it, it is hard to find great red it, mm. it really is I, I agree it really is very hard well i guess then keeping Maybe. on the the red topic we go to the ready brown that is mornfang brown yeah this is almost it's kind of like the the little brother to uh, to Rhino side, I guess. It is absolutely. They are a pair in my head, one hundred percent. Yeah, they they kind of are. They can go on so many things together. It's 
kind of crazy. Uh, I would say if you have those two, uh, you have a great warm brown base for whatever you want to turn it into from there. Uh, like you can do gold with it, like a nice warm saturated gold. Uh, you can do like wood on top of it, uh, either twist it from like a dark brown into that orangey uh, rhinoxide brown, and then going either into green or into uh, like kiss the flesh in it, so it goes more uh, like a, I guess a, a bright warm brown. I you can go so many ways there. And it is great for if you put orange on top of it, it is the perfect uh, base with rhinoxide for like rusty iron or something like that. I, I think, yeah, those two are, you don't have to use them both on the same thing, but they are great friends. Mm. <laughs> I, uh, mm. Yeah, they go basically hand in hand. You can use them either one or the other, but when they go together, such a strong pair it's crazy and it kind of has a bit of the same like um you don't have to thin it too too much before it gets into like a very rich glaze which is great for like if you want to knock back some things in like in brightness but still want to add some warmth because it, it is very warm when you uh like glaze it over something bright um i would use it for like the base color if i'm i'm doing yellow hazard stripes mm. i'm basing in that one mixing in a yellow warm yellow could be apple and sunset or whatever a warm yellow mix in 50 50 with that one and then go uh up in value i yeah i think it is such a nice warm like it is kind of an, you can use it almost as an orange, but because it is a, <laughs> and not like a super saturated orange, it looks more natural. Because if you wanted to do, for example, let's say a yellow armor on a space marine, it's great for for like the, the base shadows of a, of a yellow armor because it is in the yellow orangey spectrum, but it's a brown, so it doesn't look <laughs> weird and too cartoony because yeah you're out of that orange it it, it doesn't look as orange yeah it's uh use it for the warm bounce highlights on on goals and <laughs> yeah it's i really like this one too uh i use uh, i use i will i will say that i use the rhinox side more like on its own uh as opposed to this one because this is like uh like a bright shadow generally when i paint i have like a dark shadow, a bright shadow, then I go into a couple of mid-tones, and then I have, like, first highlight and second highlight. That's kind of how I categorize. So almost always I do kind of, like, six mixes, sometimes more, sometimes less, but it, I often do, like, the, those six mixes or six tones, I guess. Um, yeah, so this one is kind of... The step above, I guess. So I, I wouldn't base. Yeah, some things I could like if it was a bright leather, for example, bright leather satchel. It is great with the uh, basing in worn paint because mm. yeah, you can take like it, it. It fits in the sense that you can take it all the way up to something very bright. Where if you do that with like a darker brown. I guess the 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 range of uh, uh, like the contrast is is so high, where this one, I mean, it of course depends on what you painted it over. But let's say you've made it very opaque, mm. uh, so you have basically pure monochrome brown. Then you can actually take it very very bright, and still not go into almost like a metallic shine. Uh, so you could like for example leather or whatever. It's probably yeah. another one of the unicorn colors as well. In terms of yeah. I have a few colors that are kind of close, but I think with Mournfang, either they go more on the red side or more on the yeah. brown side, and nothing has so. that perfect combination of brown and red quite like Mournfang. 
Yeah, and I think it's because it's not as red as, as we think. It is more orangey, actually. I think it is a brownish orange. Um, and because when you when you look at it, and also like the, the on the screen here, you have it. It looks kind of reddish, hmm. but it is not as reddish as it, as it is there at all. Because you would have something like I don't know, Dumbo Brown or yeah, or whole red or whatever. Oh, yeah, that is way more red than Mornfang. Like it's, it's way more red. But that almost looks like the same color as you have on your screen right now. And that's mm. what I'm saying. It, it, and you can it's really it. tell when you when you kind of like thin it down and glaze it over something, you can see that it is a very nice orangey brown. And I think I, that's why it's unique. I think there's definitely something in, in terms of how certain pigments are captured digitally because... Yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. you go on like one of those like color mapper websites it's like oh we'll, yep. we'll show you what the color paint is like there are some color i think bugman is is another one where the rgb value looks nothing how it is on in yeah. the real world it's just yeah. they're, they're completely alien and i've had sites like oh yeah this color is 99 percent mournfrang and i'm like no it's not i have both of yeah. those colors in front of me they are yeah. very very different um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. so like i mean like we were saying there, there are times where I think it's, it's nice to get out of that comfort zone and pick. You know, having a tone that's slightly different isn't the end of the world. It'll make your model more unique. Sometimes you want the Mornfang brown, and damn it, you buy the Mornfang brown for it. Yep. Always yeah, have I a think, stock of Mornfang. Always have a stock of Rhinoxide. I think so. I mean, <laughs> the real trap is that uh, when you get them, you <laughs> you. You will tend to use them all the time because they just kind of does the trick. Uh, but I, I mean, <laughs> maybe we should all just paint a bit braver, I guess, and no, nope. <laughs> try, try out. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe not. If just, only uh, there was yeah. some community where there was a series of monthly challenges to get people out of yeah, their comfort yeah, zone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If only so, there was. Yeah. yeah so, so that's uh, another color that I I, I really. Love it, they, and I almost picked like something like you mentioned, Buckman's Glow, right? Because, ooh, that one is also kind of like a, a unicorn. So it's not like these are the <laughs> the final list. And yeah, there's, if you have all these paints, you can't paint everything, unfortunately. <laughs> the, you're, you're very boxed in, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so I guess on that note, when we were discussing this, you you, you mentioned an honourable mention, and I'm going to let you have this, man. I'm being very kind. Really? You and said you no, and it. now you're saying no, yes. No, no, now I'm saying yes because I just like you so damn much. You just have to have it. So what is? Yeah, I don't even. I don't have a slide for it. So it's it's on. No. It's on it. But but what is? So what's your honorable mention in in the? Best yeah, I think my. Yeah, I kind of made a half one with Bugmans, but but I think uh, having ice yellow as an honorable mention and and it is one of those that I I actually probably use it more than some of the others. But a reason for not picking it is, for me at least, <laughs> you don't put very interesting recipes when we talk about it because it goes on everything, yeah. like almost everything. You can mix it in almost everything. I mean, it turns a bit yellow. So if you distinctly want your desaturated turquoise to not go into greenish looking, of course, you wouldn't use it, right? But mm. if that's not the case, it goes in almost everything. It is such a versatile color. Great for final highlights on skin or on steel or on gold or on uh, anything almost like bright looking. Uh, I think it is so, so good. I have it both in uh, AK and Vallejo. And I will say the, the AK one is brighter. It has a bit less yellow in it, but it flows much nicer. So I think I, generally I tend to use that more. Uh, it just has a bit more white in it. Um, but I, I, I do you use both of them. Uh, so ice yellow is definitely my <laughs> honorable mention. Honorable mention. Just, yeah. I mean, just outside of the trophies, but you know, there's no there's no shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Perfect. or maybe it's just because it, uh, it it is really the one holding the Slayer sword because it does everything. It's just it won with something that we don't want to talk about because it was clearly the best one. 
Oh, I, I think <laughs> I think if 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 we were going to award a Slayer Sword, we'd probably be arguing about Rhinox Hide for a while. Yeah, I think I think that could easily hold it. Um, yeah, yeah. But we're not going to do that. We're not going to argue for the next few hours. So don't be worried, viewers. Yes. Um, that brings us to an end. Um, yeah. This has hopefully been interesting. I think paint is one of those those topics that, as you know, ultimately display painters, we could talk about eight endlessly. Um, and it's always yeah. nice to have someone that has a strong opinion about a color, just because I want to know why someone has that strong opinion and yes, what they're maybe getting exactly. at. So. Hopefully this is this has been interesting. If you don't have any of these paints, maybe you'll consider adding them to your repertoire. And if not, just share what your favorite paint is. I'd love to know. Um, do so in the community or down in the comments. I can say that now that we are we're friendly online. So um Manus, I, I, I tend to um close this off. So any any final thoughts and advice from you? Uh I would say the, the final thought is look around. Don't get stuck into one brand. Uh, I understand if you are newer in painting, you want like the colors that go in the triads or whatever they are. I I understand that. But when you've gotten out of that, try and see what is out there. So many fantastic brands and all kinds of colors and uh, speed paints and inks and all of it. Try, uh, try whatever and yeah. Be brave with uh, with painting all kinds of different things. You be might brave, get uh, despite the fact that yeah. we've said not be brave a few times. That's fine. Just keep you do, do as we say, not as we do. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time, Manus, and thank you for watching. Yeah. We will see you in the next one. For now, goodbye. Bye bye.